morning everyone this is Pastor Mel from Trinity Lutheran Church usually um, at this time we are live in Pittsburgh Ohio um, at our church located at 8520 Oaks Road um, but this morning we woke up to uh, winter storm warnings and about five or so inches of snow and decided that it would be best if we worshiped um, strictly online this morning um, and didn't uh, risk driving out in the snow and having all of you go out in the snow. So here we are uh, worshiping online today. I'm glad to be with you. I'm glad that you are here with me. Uh, if you are, uh, if you uh, if you if you do like what you see, please make a comment. Um, we uh, will do as much of the worship service as I can, uh, being as I am here at home, as you can see. Um, and not at church uh, where we don't have musicians and special music or anything like that but we do have uh, each other and we can be connected um, in this way uh, through the wonderful magic of social media Facebook and YouTube and so uh, we begin our worship this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen um, at church, we always begin our worship service with a brief order for confession and forgiveness, and I see no reason why we can't do that um, online as well. So we confess our sins before God and before one another. God of light, you light a fire within us and ask us to shine, but we are quick to hide and make excuses. We shrink from challenges, avoid responsibility, and deny the goodness of your creation. We seek hollow praise and then don't believe it. Forgive us for hiding our God-given light and remaining self-absorbed. Well, children of God, never fear, for you have always lived in the mercy of your Creator. Hear the words of absolution and believe them. You are forgiven. You are made whole. You are restored. Alleluia. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you gave the law to free your people not to sink us further into bondage. May we seek your spirit of truth in all that we do, so that our lives may glorify you always, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This morning, our scripture reading comes from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter, verses 1 through 16. One Sabbath, while Jesus was going through the grain fields, his disciples plucked some heads of grain, rubbed them in their hands, and ate them. But some of the Pharisees said, Why are you doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? Jesus answered, Have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and took and ate the bread of the presence which it is not lawful for any but the priests to eat, and gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught, and there was a man there whose right hand was withered. The scribes and Pharisees watched him to see whether he would cure on the Sabbath so that they might find an accusation against him. Even though he knew what they were thinking, he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come and stand here. He got up and stood there. Then Jesus said to him, I ask you, is it lawful to do good or harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to destroy it? After looking around at all of them, he said to them, he said to him, stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was restored. 
But they were filled with fury and discussed with one another what they might do to Jesus. Now, during those days, he went out to the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. And when day came, he called his disciples and chose twelve of them, whom he named apostles, Simon, whom he named Peter, and his brother Andrew, and James and John, and Philip and Bartholomew, and Matthew and Thomas, and James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was called the Zealot, and Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Well, grace and peace to you from God our Father, and from the one who shows us how to live out the spirit and the intent of God's laws, Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and our Lord. Amen. A couple of years ago, PJ gave me this beautiful alpaca wool sweater for Christmas. It's nice, beautiful uh, color, brown, and it's a very loose weave. I've only worn it the day she gave it to me and now today. The problem isn't how soft or wonderful it feels when I'm wearing it. It feels absolutely wonderful. And PJ's working today, so I can let all of you in on a little secret. There's really two problems with this sweater. First, I think it must have been really expensive, and so I'm afraid to wear it because I don't want it to get snagged and you know how sometimes sweaters get. But secondly, it somehow doesn't quite seem like it fits me right. It looks like it might be a little bit short in the arms and it's because it's so loose, it sort of fits me a little strangely. It's like most handmade sweaters that way, a little too wide somewhere and maybe a little too snug somewhere else. And so the set sweater up until this morning sat on my shelf in the closet. I treasure it because of who gave it to me, my beautiful and lovely wife that I love so much, but I don't get much use out of it. It's a shame when we allow gifts this beautiful to go unused or possibly to be even misused. In today's gospel reading from Luke, we have what scholars call two controversy stories over the Sabbath, or Sabbath controversy stories. The main point of these stories seems to be that the religious leaders have been misusing the God-given gift of the Sabbath. You see, God gave the Hebrew people this Sabbath gift along with nine other commandments during a time when they were wandering out in the wilderness. God had freed them from slavery in Egypt, and through his servant Moses, God was forming them into a single sort of coherent people, nation. In Egypt, the Hebrew people had no freedom at all. They worked when their masters demanded that they work, and they ate only what they were given to eat, and they slept only when they were allowed to by their slave masters. They had no idea how to govern themselves, let alone how to be God's chosen people. So in God's infinite mercy, he delivers the Ten Commandments, including the commandment to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. The religious leaders, including some of the scribes and the Pharisees, they took these Ten Commandments and they turned them into um, over 600 uh, I think 613 laws and ordinances for all the people to live by. They had turned God's good gift of 10 simple laws to live by into an onerous legal system with an exception for every rule when it suited their purposes. So along comes Jesus, this itinerant rabbi out of Nazareth, who we know to be the very word of God made flesh, the one who knows the mind of God because, well, he is God incarnate, 
And this Jesus of Nazareth decides the time has come to show these self-proclaimed religious leaders and us the true spirit and intent behind the law. In today's reading, Jesus, that radical Jesus, who always seems to want to change everything, shows those religious leaders and us a thing or two about the meaning of the Sabbath and who has the authority to interpret this command and every other one as well. Power and authority and who has the authority to wield that power is what is at stake in these controversy stories. Make no mistake about it. It's about authority and power. When Jesus allows his disciples to pick grain, thrash it in the palm of their hands, and then eat it, he was declaring his authority being over, even over the Hebrew people's greatest king that they ever knew, King David. And then in the following Sabbath uh, story, over the healing of the man with the withered hand, it's as if Jesus goes out of his way to heal this man on the Sabbath, to prove a point. This man must have been known by the scribes and the Pharisees because the text says they watched him to see what, he, what Jesus would do. He must have had that withered hand before coming into the synagogue, but Jesus waited until in the middle of their worship service to publicly call the man out and heal him right there in front of everyone. Jesus wanted to throw out the old man-made traditions and show the people God's heart of love. In the first story regarding working on the Sabbath, Jesus actually even insults the leaders when he asks them, have you never read the Bible, what it says about David? In the second controversy, his question about doing good or evil on the Sabbath must have raised the hairs on the back of their heads. These men considered themselves to be the one and only experts in the law. They were the ones who decided when the exceptions would be allowed not Jesus, but the times they are changing. <laughs> so sang Bob Dylan back in the 60s. The times they are a changing for us right now. For one thing, this corona pandemic has taught us there's more ways to worship than in person than we ever thought or ever would have dreamed of before we were forced to look outside of the box this past year. I remember when some of you interviewed me, oh, it was over seven years ago, almost eight years ago, before asking me to become your interim pastor back then. One of the topics we discussed was using technology, such as websites and other gadgets like cameras to record services. The distinct impression I got was that you all consider Trinity to be a small country church and didn't see much of an advantage in spending our budget dollars on high-tech gizmos and gadgets. I think that feeling is genuine and I truly enjoy being part of your small country church. It's now become my small country church as well. But this past year has caused us to look at how we can still stay connected to God and to one another when our old traditional ways of worship are taken away from us. A year ago, none of us would have predicted that we would have more than 100 views on Facebook Live and YouTube every single week. We're reaching out to our neighbors in totally new ways than we ever imagined before. We're even looking into purchasing permanent cameras that we can broadcast Facebook and, and uh, YouTube services on into the future, even after the pandemic passes. We'll be able to record significant events in our church family's lives, like baptisms and weddings and, and confirmations and so forth. I don't believe God has caused this pandemic, 
but we have become innovative and discovered new ways to be God's church together during this time. I wonder what other traditions we might need to examine in light of the spirit and intent of God's law and God's will for our little country church. We already took one huge step in changing uh, this past year, not only in uh, opening up to uh, recording the services and broadcasting them on Facebook, but also changing the way we worship uh, from the old revised common lectionary to this thing called the narrative lectionary. If you noticed in our worship service, we went from four scripture readings down to just one. And that reading moves through the Bible in consecutive, logical, and consistent way so that we get more of the big picture of the stories that are involved, these great and wonderful stories in the Bible. And that one change resulted in us reading some parts of the Bible that never came up in our old uh, lectionary. My point here is that when we make significant changes in our worship traditions, we try to do it in such a way um, that we can make the best use of the gifts, the good gifts that God has given to us. So come to think of it, I think I'm going to keep this alpaca sweater out of the closet. I think I'm going to wear it a little bit more because it's really nice and it's keeping me plenty warm on this cold winter's morning. I wonder if there's other good gifts that I'm just not seeing because I've kept them on a shelf in the closet. My prayer for us then is that we may always listen to Jesus and remember that all the laws, all the ordinances in the Bible are always subject to his interpretation. The Sabbath was made for humans, not the other way around. And so may we keep the Sabbath holy in our worship and in our good works, giving glory to our Father in heaven. May we keep our eyes open for ways in which our man-made traditions hold us back from living out the spirit and the intent of God's will in our lives. May Jesus continually send his spirit to us as we try to be God's hands and feet and his mouth in this place, in this time always giving glory to God. Amen. Well, we did have some special music planned for this time right after the sermon. Um, Catherine, uh, if you're listening or watching, uh, maybe you'll be able to still sing that song next week if uh, the weather is back uh, to where we can worship again. So in the meantime, let's confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. So please pray this together with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray for the church, for the world, and for all those who are in need. Heavenly Father, loosen our grip on the letter of the law and how we can use it against others. Instead, open us to the spirit of your law of love, which knows when and how to act on behalf of justice for all. O oh God of truth, hear our prayer. Reform unjust systems and shatter structures of power which trample upon the people that they were intended to serve. May your ways be our ways, and may we find new paths forward by your power. O God of truth, hear our prayer. 
As grain provided for the needs of the disciples, so you have provided that all we truly need for life. Join us with the land and the creatures who exist alongside us and free us to live in harmony with them. O God of truth, hear our prayer. Be with those who have lost jobs and other sources of livelihood, assuring them that their needs will be provided. Send your spirit of healing to all those who need it now, especially all those who are sick with this COVID virus. Um, speed the distribution of the vaccines so that we can minimize the sickness and the death from this terrible virus. We also lift up for your mercy the family of Carolyn Foreman as they grieve her loss. Give them your peace and your love and your comfort. We pray for those now that we lift before you either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. O God of truth, hear our prayer. Our true home lies in heaven with you, where all the saints of all the ages glorify you eternally. Inspire us to live each day fully here on earth in assurance of that time when all will be reunited in your love. O God of truth, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and shed light on our paths as we seek to walk in your ways and bring glory to you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Jesus is still always and always will be the tie that binds all of us together. And so let us pray as Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, I hope to see all of you next week in person uh, or once again as we join together on Facebook Live for worship. In the meantime, God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Please depart in Christ's love, seeking, welcoming, and serving all. Bye for now. Hope to see you again next week.